Hey guys, um, it's really pretty outside today, so I decided to take my lunch break outside and uh, share with you guys some new yarn uh, that I'm working with. So um, I have been working with Hobby Yarn for a little while uh, to try out some of their chunkier, uh, bulkier yarns and make some fun patterns. So you guys saw the probably saw the first pair of overalls that I did. That was part of their um, No Shades of Grey challenge from Hobby Yarn. Uh, and that was super fun. That was the first time I worked with Hobby Bungee Mini, which has become one of my favorite yarns. So that's in the super bulky category, um, a size six, six weight yarn. Um, and I've had a lot of people who've commented on it. And so I hope that it has allowed people to discover that yarn like I did. Um, and excuse the birds are really loud today, but it's really nice out here. So, um, so I reached out to Hobby Yarn again um, to see if they wanted to kind of sponsor the yarn for some of my summer patterns because I'm really excited. I want to make some bag patterns. Um, I've already made the Mariner crossbody bag, which was actually leftover yarn from the No Shades of Grey challenge. Um, after I got done making the overalls, I had just enough to make, uh, it was actually just enough to complete the Mariner crossbody bag that's uh, released now. It's out in my Etsy shop. Um, but I decided I really wanted to try their ribbon yarn. I had a couple of testers who used the ribbon yarn for their crossbody bags and it seemed like they enjoyed it. Um, and holding it double allowed it to be closer to the size six category. Um, so I'm going to share my ribbon yarn haul with you guys today, just the colors that I have and some of my initial thoughts uh, as I start uh, designing some of these new bag patterns. Uh, so the colors are gorgeous. They have a lot of options. Um, this is one of the colors. So it's this beautiful, super bright blue color. Uh, let's flip it over. There you go. So that's what it looks like. 100% cotton, which is really nice. Um, it's hard to find bulkier cottons. Uh, this is, let's see, yeah, it's considered a five, so you can see, let me do a little close-up of the back side of that. So it's a size five. Yeah, it's really hard to zoom in that close. I don't know if it's going to let me. Yeah, but it's size five, uh, designed in Denmark, made in Turkey. Uh, I don't know if that's the same with all of their yarn from Hobby, um, but so far I've really liked it. So that's the first color that I got. All of these colors will be mixed together for a bag. I haven't quite decided on the design yet. I'm still really working through that. Um, but here's another color. So this is more of a teal. So that's really nice. And it is actually pretty soft. It reminds me a lot of like the thinner shoestrings, I guess, would be kind of what that is like. There's no filler. Um, it's, you know, you can kind of squish that down. There's nothing inside of it making it bulkier. And then, I got this really pretty summery coral color. So that's a really nice one. And let me know if you guys have questions about this, this yarn, um, if you have any specific questions about it. Um, and I'm, I will uh, do my best to answer it right now. I haven't worked with it a lot yet. Um, like I said, I'm just getting started, but this is the third color. I have one more color that I got. And that's this one. So this really bright summery sunshine yellow. Um, and this is what I'm working on right now. So you can see I have both of them open. I am holding two strands of yarn together. I wanted this to be a nice summer chunky bag. So this is what I've got so far. And I'm thinking that the bag is going to be like a U shape. Um, and then like a hobo bag. But I think it's too tall. So I, I started off with 20. I chained 20. And then I went around almost like I was making a big giant bralette cup. Um, but I think this is going to be way too long as I continue to add the width here. I think it's going to get way too long. Um, so I really want to rework this design, which means frogging. Um, but it happens, you know, that's the design process. I didn't know how it was going to work up. I didn't know how large it was going to be as I started going. So, um, you know, it's just one of those things. Let's see, recommended for that yarn. Uh, what size knitting needles? I can tell you that. Let's see. So the recommended sizes for knitting needles is 8 millimeter uh, or the U.S. size 11 and a U.K. 0. Is 
that right? Seems very strange. Um, and then the hook size is a five to six millimeter and a US H to J slash eight to 10. Um, so I am using this one. So this piece that I've already made, I used a 12, uh, I think. Yes, so this is one of my 12 millimeter hooks. Um, and this is what I used to work up this piece and this was actually two held together. So that sounds about right. And I'm actually going to, when I frog that, I'm gonna try using an 11. So I've got my, let's see if I can get it. I've got my 11 millimeter hook here. So I've got my 12, 12 and my 11. So I'm gonna try it with an 11 and see because what happened was with the 12, um, I was trying to keep the holes from getting too big since it is gonna be a bag. And um, I felt like I was straining to tighten my stitches up. So um, that's the only thing about this yarn is if you are trying to stitch tightly, um, you may end up feeling like it's, it's causing tension. You know, you're gonna tighten your muscles up because you're trying to stitch tightly. So I'm gonna size down a hook for my next um, trial. So I'm gonna make this shorter um, and I'm gonna use a smaller hook and I'm hoping that will allow me to loosen up my stitches a little bit more. So as I'm pulling each stitch through, I can give myself a little bit more wiggle room um, so I'm not tightening everything up so much to try to keep it tight. Um, oh, it keeps glitching. I'm sorry, I'll include it in, um, I'm gonna repost this. So I will include it in the description. Um, I'll include all of the uh, extra details in the description for you. Um, is this glitching for other people? I, I hope it's not. Um, like I said, uh, I now have it listed where my lives will be um, saved in my archive. So hopefully that means I'll be able to download them no matter what happens and I can re, uh, retake, uh, uh, re repost the photo. Yes, it is a lake. That's our, uh, that's our little, our little lake. Um, that was the, one of the captain's wishes was being able to go fishing, uh, anytime he wanted. So when we found this little place, it was definitely like a little bit of a dream for us to be able to, to have this little house on a lake. So it's been great. Um, and the birds are just fantastic. I mean, we have lots of trees. You can see all of the trees, um, around. And then we just had, we just put a bird feeder in. Let's see if I can turn this. Yep. Yeah, so there's a bird feeder right right up there, right above my finger. Um, and so we have lots and lots of birds and it's been so cool. I've never had a bird feeder where I've lived. Um, even growing up at my house, I think my grandparents always had one, but, but we never had one. So um, it's so cool, like all the birds that are coming to it and all the different types of birds. Um, it's turned me into a bit of a bird lover. So that's really neat. Um, we also have a bluebird house that we've had for three to four years um and so we've had i mean i don't know four or five or six bluebird families so we've gotten to watch the little babies uh grow up and fly away uh i got to see my first first flight of the baby bluebirds coming out of the nest so that was really really cool um but yeah so lots of birds lots of uh nature um i should probably have bug spray on so uh That'll be on my to-do list if I stay out here too long. Um, but yeah, so back to this. For anyone who missed it, um, I know that I was glitching a little bit for someone who was asking, but um, I am talking about my new hobby ribbon yarn. Um, it's 100% cotton and it's, it's considered a size five. And um, it is recommended eight millimeter needles and five to six millimeter hook but I am holding it double for my next project. So I'm gonna be using either an 11 millimeter or a 12 millimeter hook. And this is my progress so far, but I'm gonna to have to frog this because it's just too long. It's gonna be a big wide bag. And I think that the extra length on the bottom is just gonna get, it's gonna to be too big. So I'll probably shorten it up about halfway and then make it nice and wide and then it'll be deep. And then I'm gonna do like a hobo style strap. So it won't be a crossbody. Um, it'll sit right underneath here. And I just need to figure out what, what kind of straps I wanna do. Um, but I'm super excited uh, about this project and I'm super thankful that Hobby has decided to work with me again and send me this great yarn so I can try it out. Um, so far, uh, for feel wise, um, I actually kind of want to make a wearable out of this. Um, 
I think it would be soft enough and I feel like it's the kind of yarn that's gonna hold up well when you wash it. Um, just because of the structure, it's, it's really nice and I think it'll probably get softer with wash. It's not super soft just because of the structure. So you can see the, the structure, like I said, it's kind of like shoestrings. There we go. Um, so I mean, you know, shoestrings aren't really super soft, but um, I feel like it'll probably soften up over time and I think it's gonna be really, really nice for, um, for the bag that I'm working on. I think it'll make a really great tote bag. Um, but let me make sure, let me see, make sure anybody had any other questions um, in the chat. And thanks for joining in. And if there's anything else that you want to know about this yarn, let's go back through. Oh, it doesn't want to let me go back any further. Oh, there we go. Let's see. I don't think I had any more questions. No. Okay. All right, awesome. So um, I'm probably just gonna work with it a little bit um, so you guys can see how it works up. And like I said, I'm going to be using, oh, thanks. This is, uh, it's in my, these are in my bonfire shop, uh, the link in my bio. I finally got this color. This lavender color is so pretty. Um, this is the Comfort Colors brand. So you guys can see Comfort Colors. Um, they have the most like kind of earth, it, it's, they're brighter colors, but they still have a bit of earth tone to them. So I, I like that kind of muted bright colors and they have a lot of options. So um, these are in my bonfire shop. That's the link in my bio. And then you click maker apparel. I think it's like shop maker apparel. And there's a whole bunch, whole bunch of options. There's tank tops and sweatshirts and hoodies and all that fun stuff. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do, let's see. I get my scissors because I don't want to have to sit here on this video and frog it. So I'm going to snip it. Okay, and I'm going to make my new product from this one. Um, so that way it'll be a little easier to, to manage. Um, so create as you frog. Feels a little better, you know. Um, where do I get my hook? So the, these are my hooks. So um, me and Captain Hook, we print these uh, on our 3D printer. And then we coat them with resin. So this is a this is an 11 millimeter hook. Uh, let's see if it doesn't want to. Yeah, you can still see that. So that's our new markings on the bottom. Um, we coat them with resin so they're nice and smooth. Um, we do the inline style hook. Sometimes there's a little bit of a resin drip on the end. Let's see if it'll focus. It doesn't. Work. There we go. Um, but it's kind of nice because it's super smooth. And and I'll go through and sand that to make sure that there's nothing that'll catch. Um, but this is what I'm going to use today to make my next little bit. And I think I had another question. Fabric mix. This is 100% cotton, um, which is really great because it's it can be difficult to find um, bulkier weight yarns in 100% cotton or even just cotton blends. So let's get started. So I'm going to do, I think I did 20. I think I changed 21 on the last one. So I think I'm going to drop that down to maybe like 10 to 12. But yeah, so you can see it's it's a, it's not going to be quite as easy to slide through. I feel like I have to work a little bit harder, but I sized my hook down so that I could have a little bit of a looser grip and I'm not having to fight that tension. So I can make my stitches a little bit looser. Oops. And this one. Can make my stitches looser and then I'm not going to be quite so tense while I'm working. And I think that will be helpful. But so far, I, I really do enjoy it. I think it's, like I said, I think it's going to make a really nice bag. I think I could even drop down to like a 10 millimeter versus a, this is, versus the 11. Um, what's the other polyester? Uh, so this one, all of mine, right, all of these are cotton right now. So I'll show you the other colors in case you're just joining in. Um, I have four colors that are going to be included in this bag pattern. I haven't figured out quite how that striping is going to work, but these are my other three colors. So they're super summery and bright and pretty. But these are all the ribbon yarns. So these are all 100% cotton. Um, the if may, you might be referring to the other yarn that I used by Hobby, which is um, I believe it's a cotton polyester mix. I might be wrong. I know that it's cotton and something else. 
Um, and I'm gonna do another video on that because they did send me more Hobby Bungee yarn to make another tote bag. So I'm gonna have two tote bags coming out um, in the next couple of months. So that's super exciting. Um, but this one's gonna be a hobo style bag. Um, but it'll be nice and big, so that should be a really fun one. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, 12, 13, 14. I think that's right. Fifteen. Yeah, I think fifteen. Maybe twelve. Let's do twelve. So fourteen, thirteen, twelve. And let's do 13 because I want this to be straight across. So I'll do 12 across here. There's my nice little chain. And that's held together. That's two strands of ribbon held together. And, and I think that this is pretty universal for ribbon yarn. So if you're getting ribbon yarn somewhere else, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments and let me know. But I, I think that it's, us it's usually 100% cotton. And um, there's plenty of places where you can find it not just from Hobby. Um, and Hobby also has a couple of different brands. I think they have one, maybe it's Mayflower um, or something, but they have a couple of options. But this one is their brand um, and it's lots of colors. So um, t-shirt yarn is also on my um, purchase list. I want to try some t-shirt yarn. Um, I really just want to try all of the bulky yarn that's out there. So um, I think it'll be fun to do more videos like this where it's just uh, me talking about the different yarns. I, I think that's one of my biggest questions is what kind of yarn do I use? Um, because I use these chunky hooks and um, you know people want to know what's out there to use with chunkier hooks. Um, and for the longest time I really only used the Woolies Thick and Quick from Lion Brand um, mostly because I was making products for shows um, and that was just easy. I could find it anywhere. It had a lot of colors. Um, it was nice and warm. Um, but now that I'm designing a lot more things and I'm not really going to shows, it, it gives me a lot more freedom to just try new things and, and try new yarn. And I'm not really concerned if it's something that people will buy because I'm making it for a design, you know. So um, there's an alternative purpose. Um, and, and it's been really fun getting to, to try different fibers and different yarns. Um, and summer products are extremely new for me. So um, I used to make crop tops three or four years ago to, to try to sell those finished products, but I quickly found out that I, I couldn't quite find the market for people who wanted to buy them at the price that I thought they were worth. Um, and then it just didn't feel worthwhile cranking them out like that, you know, when people didn't really want to pay what I thought they were worth. Um, and so, you know, wrote up the patterns for those, don't make them anymore. Um, and those are, if you're interested, um, I have two crop top patterns. One is like super duper simple and it's called the everyday crop top. Um, so I think I have like six of those that I wear during the summer or just around the house because they're extremely comfortable. Um, and then I have the Rachel crop top, which is my, it's a little bit more, um, a little bit more intricate, but I think it would still be considered an easy pattern because there's lots of photos to guide you. And um, I try to keep it super simple on the majority of my patterns. So, um, oh, thank you. Yes, it's in my bonfire shop. If you guys like it, I finally have one. I, I only had a sweatshirt, so I finally have the shirt and I get to wear it now, so. Um, but yeah, so check out the crop tops if you're interested. Um, but for those, I used uh, like Lily Sugar and Cream uh, cotton and I've used that. So another question I get a lot about yarn is, um, you know, most of my patterns call for a jumbo, like a super bulky yarn, so a size six. And a lot of people will say, oh, I, I don't use super bulky yarn, or I don't know where to get it, or I don't want to buy super bulky yarn, so I can't do your patterns. And that's totally not true. Um, you can combine yarns and make scrappy projects. Um, my romper that technically you can use a size six yarn, I actually use three strands of worsted weight yarn. So you can play around with a whole bunch of different yarn combinations. You can go into your stash. You can play around with what you already have. And then the biggest thing is just making sure that you check your gauge. So that's something I posted about yesterday. Um, I never used to check my gauge for projects. I never thought it was that important. Um, I probably should have. I feel like I might have had a better time 
with some of the patterns that I had followed in the past if I had you know taken the time to check my gauge and make sure that you know I was on the same scale of you know stitch depth uh, stitch um, tension uh, that the designer used and um, let me see if oh yes so we did end up making so you guys uh, if you're following me you know we we design and print our own hooks so this is one of ours but um, we started making these gauge uh, gauge squares yeah right there so uh, it's so funny because the captain uh, so my husband captain hook um, he said oh all these girls all these crochet girls are asking me about um, gauge tools you know if we would make something like this and I was like I don't you know we don't I don't use those I don't know if people would actually use those um, but no these have actually been a hit we just released them I don't know, it was yesterday? Two days ago. I don't know. You can look at my feed, but I posted about these. Um, there are a few left in my shop. We've started using them, uh, the leftover filament from our hooks, uh, to make these to help us um, not have any waste. You know, so we make these and we make yarn bobbins and things like that. But um, I started, you know, now I've realized it, it really opens the door for you as um, someone who follows patterns, who purchases patterns. Um, you know, you don't always have to use the exact hook size or um, yarn size that the designer calls for as long as you match their gauge you know so you can get creative and use a whole bunch of different types of yarn hold them together um, use a different hook size if you need to but you know we made these to help with that so um, I started using these now and it's, it's made the process easier I can even take a picture of um, I can put this down on my project and take the photo and, and I, I may start including that in my patterns I think that would be nice um, but yeah, so, uh, for now, just, um, chilling and making, hopefully, what'll turn out to be a cool bag. Um, like I said, it's just nice outside today. We had a, um, air quality warning maybe two days ago. Um, so I try not to be out if it's really bad so that I don't end up with, like, a scratchy throat or... Um, messed up sinuses but it's supposed to be really nice today and it feels really nice outside so um, I thought it would be nice to come on and share my new yarn with you guys so but yeah if you guys have any more questions I'm totally here I'll hang out for a minute and um, just work a little bit uh, I'm wondering what kind of bag you know this is gonna be more of a hobo style bag um, but I need to figure out what kind of bag I'm going to make with the bungee mini. So they sent me this yarn, but they also sent me a lot more of the size six, the super bulky hobby bungee mini, which I love. I mean, I, it really is one of my favorites now. I'm, I'm really wanting to try to make some more wearables like a cardigan or something with it. I think that'd be really fun, but it makes great bags. Um, you know, kind of home deck, home decor kind of stuff. Can you speak briefly about the class you're teaching on Sunday? Yes, I can, and I totally should have brought this up. So, if you guys don't know, um, I teach pattern writing workshops. So, um, I started writing patterns probably three years ago, um, and I realized, you know, it's kind of like anything else. You have to just jump in. Like, you have to just go for it, um, you know, but it can still be super intimidating uh, to write your own pattern and to put it out there in the world. And so um, I started teaching a class that it goes through um, from the very, very beginning. I talk about how do you start taking your notes? How do you actually design the item? Um, how do you set yourself up to where you're not going to have to make the same item a million times uh, before you feel ready to write the pattern down? Because that's my first pattern was my Rachel crop top. So it was a lot to... Uh, a lot to take on as my first pattern um, because it was a crop top with multiple sizes. I wanted it to be as inclusive as I could make it at that time with the knowledge that I had. Um, and so I talk about how to take the notes and how to kind of work from that beginning design phase and to build up your confidence to make sure that you figure out how to take your notes and turn those notes into structure. Um, I talk about taking photographs, progress photos, um, you know, filming video tutorials, if that's something that you feel like your pattern needs. 
Um, I talk about, I actually go through Canva, which is the software that I use to create my patterns, and I'll show you, um, I actually show you some of my really old patterns, what they looked like to what they look like now, that they're a lot more branded and um, have a very defined look to them. Um, but I go through that process of taking your notes, putting them into a nice structure. Um, we go through step by step all of the different elements of a successful pattern. So all of the different things that you need to make sure that people can follow your pattern um, and can understand it and that, and that they're going to want to come back and buy more of your patterns. Uh, we talk about sizing. We talk about um, how to go from a single size to create multiple sizes. Um, there's quite a bit of math involved, but once you get it, um, it, it's it's actually fairly easy and um, talk about the sizing you can find it on I think it's craft yarn council uh, that has become a great website for me to make sure that my sizing is correct for different for each different size yes how to grade um, I don't go into a ton of very very specific detail because a lot of that is dependent on the product that you're making um, but I talk about that math, so how to take your gauge, the stitch counts and the row counts, and do the math to figure out, okay, if I'm going to be adding an inch or two to each size or to each length, how do you get those numbers? Um, and that also is included in the workbook that you get along with the class. So my workbook is about $12. Um, it will probably go up soon. This was kind of that intro pricing, so make it accessible. It's about 30 pages. Um, it sets you up to show you exactly what you need. Um, it has all of my tips on pattern writing and photography. Um, but the workshops just, it's one-on-one. -on -one. You know, it's on Zoom. I get to talk to you, I get to meet you. Um, you can ask me any specific questions that you have, so that's really nice. Um, another thing that I talk about is testing. So I talk about how to find testers. I talk about how to manage your testers, how to keep track of things, how to set deadlines. Um, you know, it really just, it's everything. It's every, it's the whole process that, that I've gone through. I talk about how to market your patterns, um, you know, the different ways you can release them. Um, you know, I talk about the community that you can create by becoming a designer and, and putting your patterns out there. Um, you know, it's just, it's a really nice little class. And, and I do have, I try to keep them small. Uh, usually I limit the classes to like seven to eight people because I want everyone to have the opportunity to ask questions, um, you know, and to let me know if they have you know, specific things that they want to cover more heavily than others. Um, and I think I have five, four or five spots left in, in the class that's coming up. So this class is this Sunday. So it's this coming Sunday at 1230 Eastern Time. Um, I am hoping to have my class schedule planned for next month in the next couple of days as well. I, I would like to start offering this class at least once a month or once every two months is my goal um, because it has been my most popular class. I feel like there's a lot of people that benefit from it. You guys can read the reviews on, um, I actually do the registration through Etsy and that way if people want to leave reviews they can. Um, and then I also have some reviews listed on the actual listing. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about it, you can go to the link in my bio and you can click on virtual classes, live virtual classes, and that'll take you, I think there's only one listed right now in my shop, but you can read a little bit more about it. Um, but yeah, it should be really fun. They're always fun. I love getting to actually see people face to face and, and uh, you know, kind of get to know you guys a little bit better. And, and it, I really think it strengthens that community of, of all of us um, when we have that chance to, you know, meet face to face and actually have conversations. Um, and that's why I don't sell it as a, um, I don't sell it as a pre-recorded video because it's just, you can get that on YouTube, you know? Like you, you can go and search blogs and you can search YouTube. And um, I really wanted it to be a class. I really wanted it to be a live, you know, virtual class where you could ask questions. And um, yeah, so I plan on uh, signing up this evening. Woohoo! Yeah, and feel free to message me, guys, if you ever have questions about a class or if you have questions about a design or anything on my feed that, that I'm promoting, um, you can always reach out. I, I'm accessible, I'm here. Um, I love getting to talk to you guys. Um, you know, it's still kind of mind blowing that my account has grown the way that it has because it's just me, you know, it's just me here. And um, 
you know, I, I'm not at a point in any way, shape, or form where I can't answer my messages um, or respond to comments. So, you know, never feel like you can't reach out. How long will it take me to finish my hobo bag? Uh, mm, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, as some of you guys might know, I, I can't crochet like I used to. I have a lot of issues with like neck pain and shoulder pain and um, wrists not so much, mainly just this area. Um, and so I have to take it really easy and I think that's kind of the beauty of now. My focus is on designing so I can kind of take as long as I want, which is really great. There, there aren't, I, I try to set deadlines for myself, but I try not to push myself too hard. Um, so I actually have a cardigan that I'm working on, a summer cardigan, that I would like to release before the hobo bag. Um, and then I have, my summer top is being tested. This is my first cotton summer top that's in testing right now. And then I also have a really fun pattern that's coming out that I can't wait to share with you guys. And um, if you go way back in my feed, you'll see these little cat-themed coffee and beer cozies that I used to make for shows. Uh, and I used to be super, super um, selfish about that pattern. I didn't want to, to write the pattern out because I was making a lot of money off of them. They were uh, unique enough. You know, I didn't see any of them on Etsy that looked just like mine. Um, and locally, I sold a ton of them uh, back when I was going to craft shows. And we also have a cat cafe in Atlanta uh, called Java Cats Cafe. And uh, they sold them, they sold like wildfire at the cat cafe. So because I don't go to shows anymore and because I'm not really selling online anymore, um, I decided it was time to release the cat cozy pattern. So uh, I'm, I think that it's going to be next month. So June, I believe is going to be the month that I release my uh, bottle cat cozy pattern. Um, so you guys will be able to make your little cat, cat cozies. Um, and I, as far as I know, they'll probably sell for you as well as they did for me. So if you're someone who makes a lot of products for craft shows, uh, the cat cozies for me do, did really, really well. So that'll be a really fun craft show pattern. And that actually leads me to tell you guys, um, if you've ever wondered, you can totally sell finished products from my patterns. Um, that's something that I know is for some designers, it's you know, you have to ask them permission or you have to let them know what you're selling it for. Um, I don't sell finished, finished products anymore. Um, not, not at the level that I used to. So any of the patterns that I create and put out there, um, they're actually great for craft shows because they all work up really, really fast. So, um, the hat pattern that's in my shop was my go-to hat pattern for craft shows for me. And the fall is just a simple pom-pom hat. Um, and I'm really thinking the, the crossbody bag pattern that I just put out would probably be really cool for summer shows because um, it works up really fast and um, that would be a good staple for like a summer or spring craft show since it's, you know, not a warm wearable. Um, but yeah, so the tote bag, um, I'm hoping that I'll finish it. I, I would love for it to be released in July. I mean, that would be awesome if I could get it released in July um, but that also depends on how quickly I can get it written up and how quickly I can get it tested um, I don't think it'll take as long to test since there won't be multiple sizes I, I think it's gonna just be one size probably uh, my Mariner crossbody has two sizes there's a smaller and a larger size but I think this one will probably be one size only um, let's see summer cardigan I need more cardigans yes so this one I haven't decided if it's gonna have sleeves um, right now it's going to be vest style, maybe like a cap sleeve, and it's going to be like flowy in the front. So I want it to have like the big panels in the front that then open up so it's, it like flows down really nice. I don't know. We'll see if it works. <laughs> I am almost done with the second panel. And so I've got to make three panels and then I'll attach them together and kind of see what it's looking like and if I even like it and if I'm going to keep going with it um, or if I need to rework it. And uh, is my class just one-on-one? -on -one? So my classes, if only one person signs up, which has happened, um, one of my last social media classes was a one-on-one -on -one because I only had one person sign up, but that just meant a lot more time for them to really dig into their own platforms and um, I could offer them very specific help. Um, 
the pattern classes, I've never had just one person. Usually they are anywhere from five to eight people. Uh, I limited it eight, so there's only, um, usually there's only eight spots. And then, um, you know, usually if there's only one person, I'll reach out to them to make sure, hey, are you cool with it being a one-on-one? -on -one? Um, if not, you know, you can reschedule for another time or, you know, I can refund them at that point. But usually they'll still want to do the class and they just have a lot more time for themselves to ask questions. So, um, so yeah, join me if you want to. It's uh, this, this Sunday. I'm uh, doing a Pattern Riders 101 Pattern Riders uh, workshop, so that should be a lot of fun. Um, but I got totally off topic. Uh, <laughs> um, if you are just now joining in, I actually came on here to show uh, show my new yarn from Hobby, um, which is the ribbon Hobby Ribbon yarn, um, which I really do like. I'm, I'm super excited about it, and um, I, I started my project, but it's too long. Um, I want it to be a bag, and so I know that if I start going wider, it's going to get really, really, really long, and I don't want it to be, I don't want it to hold, like, my whole house. So, <laughs> so I'm going to redo it, and um, I'm starting off with my 12, I think 12 stitches, instead of, I started off with 20 here, so there's where the end of my chain was and the bottom of my chain. So um, it's going to be a lot shorter, but that'll give me more wiggle room as I go out. It will, you know, lengthen here. Um, but that's tough with sizing. It's always kind of tough. So, um, but yeah, hobby ribbon yarn, first time using it. I really do like it. Uh, and I'll show you one more time before I go, uh, the colors in case you missed it. And I will repost this one. Hopefully Instagram won't eat it. But here are my other colors. So really excited. We got a coral and a teal and a bright blue and they're, uh, they're so pretty. So I'm really excited, and I didn't realize that um, hobby yarn stretches a lot, like ri ribbon yarn in general. I have a feeling it's probably just ribbon yarn. Yes, so you just asked if it was stretchy. It stretches a lot, I, and so I'm probably going to have a lot left over, uh, which, which, is, which is great because um, uh, I tried to estimate based on how much yardage the Mariner bag took and up it because I wanted this to be like double or triple the size of the Mariner bag. I really want it to be a larger tote bag. But as I'm using it, I'm like, oh, this is like using next to none of this because it's stretching out as I use it. Um, so I have a feeling I'll be able to make some kind of summery cardigan. So maybe we'll get two summer cardigans. I really got to get on it if I'm going to do that. It may be a summer cardigan that releases in the fall. So maybe like a, you know, reverse spring cardigan. So it won't be fall colors. Um, but it may be a, more a fall style, but with spring colors. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, let's see. I think that's all of our questions. So I am probably going to log off now. Um, don't forget if you're still on here, I am going to go live on YouTube for the first time with, um, affordably crafty and yarn geek. Um, so this is their affordably geeky podcast uh, or YouTube cast. I don't know what you call that. YouTube live. Um, that is this Saturday at from 8 a.m. Eastern time. It's going to be an early morning, y'all. 8 a.m. Eastern time to 11 a.m. Eastern time. Is that right? 8, 9, 10. Yeah, so three hours. So 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern time on Saturday. I'm going to be live on YouTube, um, which I'm really excited. I, I think it's going to be really fun. Um, I would, I'm, I really am just excited to do more within our community and going live with more of the people in our community. Um, you do not have to have a YouTube account to watch. Uh, I just saw that question come up. No, Stevie, you don't have to have a YouTube account. Um, you can watch it, you know, just go to YouTube. Um, I will have the link in my bio. Uh, so I'll probably do a countdown to it. And I'll have a link because I believe the stream is live. So you can actually go to the stream now. It's just going to say coming soon. So it's set up to go live. Um, so you can actually, I'll, I will be able to have like a swipe up to that. Um, and you'll be able to save the link. So I'll include that when I post this video. And I will post to my stories with a little countdown. Um, and the day of that morning... I'll post a swipe up link as well. So that way if you come to my stories and you're looking for it, you can swipe straight to it. Um, so that's the beauty of swipe up. I'm so glad I have that now because it's a lot easier for me to share things like that with everybody. 
Um, but yes, so join us live. It should be a lot of fun. Um, it sounds like we're just going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Um, there's not a, a specific uh, thing. I think some of it's going to be the, a lot of what I talked about today, some of the different yarns that I use, um, some of the jumbo yarns. We'll talk about my hooks a little bit. We'll talk about the process there. We'll talk about my classes. Um, so it should be really fun, and you should go check them out. So it's uh, Affordably Geeky here on Instagram. and I mean, Affordably Crafty here on Instagram, and Yarn Geek here on Instagram are their profiles. So go check them out. Um, show them some love and uh, join us on Saturday um, you know you may have to wake up really really early but uh, it will stay there too so if you can't catch it live um, their YouTube uh, their streams will stay up so you can always go back and watch it later which is great um, I don't have the swipe up function anymore oh did it just go away that's that's strange um, I know it's 10, I think it's 10,000 followers that you're supposed to get it. Um, and I don't know if you drop down under 10 if it goes away. Um, I'm not really sure. So, but I just got it um, on one of my work accounts that I manage. Um, it took a while to, to get there, but we finally got it and we were able to start using that function. Um, but it takes some time, you know, so, but, all right. Cool. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to start doing these more and more and more. Um, so I hope you enjoy them. Uh, I'm definitely going to come on to talk about the other hobby yarn that they sent me um, for my next bag. And uh, I think the next live that I'm going to do um, to talk about one of my past blog posts will be about hashtags. So that was one of my favorite blog posts that I wrote a while back about how to use hashtags, how to find them. Um, yeah, so, uh, we'll talk all about hashtags, um, probably next week, maybe this weekend. I don't know whenever I feel like coming on here again. Um, but all right. Thanks for joining in guys. And we'll talk again soon. Bye.